A friend of my wife's invited my family, my wife, 29, our son, kindergartner, and I, 26 male, over for dinner with him, 30 male, and his daughter, kindergartner. As long as we've known him, this friend has kept to a very strict diet, which has almost always led to us eating over at his place, but he is an excellent cook, so I've never minded. We haven't, however, seen him since both of our children were infants. For dinner, we were served salmon with quinoa and arugula. My son is very mild for a child of his age. He rarely throws tantrums and is the opposite of a picky eater, but I could tell from how he acted that he wasn't vibing with this meal. He was picking at his plate, shuffling food, and while he did try the salmon, he didn't seem to like it. I asked him if he was happy with this dinner, and he said no, he wasn't. I basically said, ha ha, kids right, and asked if there was anything else for my son to eat. My wife's friend said his daughter eats whatever he makes so he doesn't keep kid food around the house. My wife said it was fine, our son would be fine. While he is a mild kid, he definitely gets hangry, and this was the beginning of our night, so we anticipated being there for an additional hour or two. I said that our son needed to eat so he'd have the energy to play and apologized, saying I'd be gone for just a few minutes, picking up something for our kid. My wife's friend seemed irked, but he said he'd try and keep my plate warm. I was gone for about 30 minutes, came back with a happy meal, ordered extra fries in case his daughter wanted any, which he wasn't allowed to have. By the time I was back, dinner was winding down. My son ate his meal, we had dessert, and he went off to play with his friend. It was definitely a hiccup in the night, but things went fine. We had a good time, but my wife was definitely cold with me. When we got home, three hours after dinner, she told me that I was an idiot at dinner for no reason. I pointed out that if I hadn't got our son dinner, he would have been a monster the entire way home, to which she replied that we would have left earlier. I said I was just looking to solve the problem as it happened and that if her friend had been more accommodating, we wouldn't have been in the situation in the first place. She got offended on his behalf and we decided to just go to bed because we clearly weren't getting anywhere. It's been two days since and things are still stilted between us and I'm not sure where I went wrong. Am I the idiot for leaving dinner to get my son food, even though dinner was served? You are the idiot. That was really rude, especially because they had a kid and you brought an obvious treat food into the house. If your kid is picky, bring granola bars along with you or something, and if you fail to do so, just handle it as it comes the way your wife suggested. If your kid was going to be a monster, you could have left early and stopped at McDonald's on the way home, and your kid wasn't even complaining, and there was dessert coming. You way overreacted. So, in the middle of eating, you left. He had some bites and could have waited 30 minutes for you and your wife to finish the meal. Let's be honest, OP, you ducked out in the middle of the meal because you didn't like it and wanted McDonald's for yourself. Yeah, OP, show us the receipt. That's what I was thinking too. The way he described the next steps was odd. The host said he tried to keep OP's plate warm, but then OP said he got back, they had dessert, and not, he had dinner quick and they all had dessert. OMG, this is so funny. It's probably what happened. He did buy extra fries. Don't act like he didn't have a few of those delicious goldens. OP sounds like an entitled person, so of course he would use his son as an excuse. I'm trying to imagine how uncomfortable it was for the adults left behind to try and carry on their visit and conversation after OP got up in the middle of their meal and just left to get fast food. OP, don't expect an invite back. This past weekend, a group of friends from high school and I got together on Saturday. The last time I'd seen them was a year ago and I, 23 female, was a bit overweight. I've been having health issues for a while, making it hard to be active. Since my metabolism is horrible, I gained a lot of weight. I was about 5 foot 7, 210 pounds. I resolved my health issues and I've been able to hike and work out again, so naturally I started losing weight. I'm about 165 now, not back to my normal, but I'm much happier now. I went from obese to just a bit overweight. This weekend when we got together, one friend, Derek, said, You lost a lot of weight. You look great. Congrats. Or something like that. I said, Thanks for noticing. I'm a lot happier now. A girl in my friend group, Serena, who isn't my favorite, to be honest, said it's not appropriate for Derek to comment on anyone's weight, and I shouldn't reinforce that it's okay. Serena has always been kind of bossy, telling people what they can and can't say or do. I told her it's a personal preference, and since I'm not insecure about myself, I don't have any issues with people commenting on my weight or appearance, but I'll be sure to never bring up her weight or appearance in the future since I know her preference. Our whole group of 10 sided with me except Serena's best friend. Those two decided to go home and have been texting me telling me what an awful person I am. Am I the idiot for saying thanks for noticing when my friend commented on my weight and reinforcing that it's okay to do so? 
It's generally considered rude to point out weight gain, but you've been working hard and it shows. Derek just acknowledged that. He did nothing wrong and you did nothing wrong by thanking him for the compliment. Not the idiot. Serena is an odd one, to be sure. I'm detecting a hint of jealousy from her and her best friend. It's also rude to point out weight loss as it can frequently be due to an illness. As a general rule, I always avoid talking about the weight of other people, both about gain and loss, because it's objectively a delicate topic. I can see why she was upset if he had a habit of doing this. Not everyone would be happy to receive that comment, but it isn't on your OP to respond disingenuously. What? The receiver of the compliment didn't mind it, some other chick didn't like it. LMAO. Imagine being so entitled about someone else's boundaries. The nerve of her dictating how you should feel about what someone said to you. The nice part about high school being over is you are not legally mandated to hang out with some people ever again. Yay. My 33 female family and I went to a new local restaurant last weekend. We live in a small town, so any new business gets a lot of attention and talks locally, and usually most of the town tries to check it out when it first opens, and the initial experiences, reviews and chatter between the locals can make or break business early on. Unfortunately, this restaurant we had a terrible experience at, we had to wait for ages for a table as they were so busy, the staff didn't seem like they always knew what they were doing, we weren't that keen on the taste of the food, and some dishes came late which was really annoying and ruined the evening for us. They gave us a discount and apologised, but it didn't really change the experience. We would never go there again. When my friends and I met for lunch a few days later, I mentioned we went to the new restaurant and they were all interested in hearing my opinion on it, and I said the above and said I wouldn't go there again. My friend May stared at me with a face like thunder and say, You do remember this is my brother's restaurant? I said, Yes, I do, but it's nothing personal. I'm just giving my opinion on a restaurant as I do for any business. I was a normal customer there like anyone else. It's not about it being her brother's business for me, it's just a restaurant that I visited. And I asked whether I was not allowed to have an opinion just because it was her brother's place. She said I was being rude, weird, and couldn't I just be normal with some awareness and talk about it behind her back if I really wanted to say all that to save her feelings. And also said that if I got a discount and an apology, then I shouldn't go around bad-mouthing it so severely as it could ruin the business for them when they've only just started and trying to find their feet. I said I was just giving my honest opinion, and then she said I badmouth every restaurant I go to anyway, and everywhere is always a terrible experience for me, so it's not like my opinions are valid anyway. I thought that was ridiculous, as there are restaurants I've liked. I can't change my opinion on the ones I've had a bad experience at. You are the idiot. You checked out a brand new restaurant, and unsurprisingly, there were some kinks in the operation because, duh, they're still figuring things out. Even if this was a strange restaurant, your opinion isn't fair considering the circumstances. But this wasn't a random restaurant, it was your friend's brother, and that friend was present when you were asked about the restaurant. In this situation, you failed to display any empathy, understanding, or concern for your friend's feelings. Not only is the restaurant new and working out kinks, but it sounds like management was aware of the situation since OP got a discount and an apology for the mishaps. A spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down, as Mary Poppins said. I think that says a lot about how this restaurant is being run. The way management addresses or doesn't address a mistake or unpleasant experience is usually the deciding factor for me on whether I will eat at that place again. I also found it funny that one of their complaints was that it was busy, so it took a long time to get a table. If I see a new place with a three-hour wait, know what I do? Make a reservation. Like some people are just full of main character syndrome. Based on that and her friend calling her out for always complaining, I can tell exactly what type of person OP is. Not the idiot. So you're only allowed to have positive opinions about things. That kind of loses the point, no? May isn't an idiot here, but she definitely sucks by getting bent out of shape over fair and thoughtful criticism. Who gives a crap that it's your brother? And then you want OP to talk crap behind your back if he's going to talk crap? Jesus, grow up. What are we, children? Here's an idea. Share the info with your brother to help him become aware so he can be aware of any problems and try to do something to fix the experience for all future customers. Take an opportunity when it comes your way. I, 24 female, have been engaged to my fiancé, 26 male, for four months now. 
Ever since dating, we've been inseparable, and we've decided that we would rather be married now and have a ceremony later than try and save up for a big ceremony now. That being said, we had settled on a simple courthouse wedding. I'm a very sentimental, family-oriented person. However, my family lives out of state, but my fiancé's family lives down the street from us. Originally, when I agreed to a quick courthouse ceremony, we had decided to keep it a secret from family so that nobody's feelings would be hurt from not being at the ceremony. We both have large, extended families. But now he's decided that he wants to tell his family about the ceremony so they can be there. The problem is that my family wouldn't be able to attend and he knows how important it would be for my family to attend the wedding ceremony. I feel like it's unfair to have only one side of the family in attendance when the other side can't be there. I'm unsure if I'm feeling this way, but I can't help feeling jealous and upset. I had expressed these feelings, but he just brushed them off and told me I was being unfair. But if I'd known he'd intended to invite his family, after all, I would have wanted to wait until we could afford a whole ceremony so both sides could be in attendance. I feel like I may be acting like a brat, but I can't tell anymore. That being said, am I the idiot for not wanting my fiancé's family at our wedding? I had expressed these feelings, but he just brushed them off. This isn't encouraging. Communication is one of the pillars upon which a successful relationship is built. Without it, the relationship will be on shaky ground, if not outright collapse. Are you sure you want to jump into marriage so quick? I don't understand the rush to get married. Darling, this is what your life will be like from here forward. He thinks his family feelings are more important than you, the bride. That's messed up of him to switch up on such short notice, knowing your family can't be there. Honestly, he knows what he's doing and is selfish. Nasty of him to brush your very valid feelings off too. You'll regret allowing this to happen, OP. This is almost exactly what happened with our wedding. We were meant to elope privately here in his country and then have receptions later in both our respective countries that all our family and friends could attend. I ended up caving when he decided to invite his family. My parents did fly over from the US to Australia last minute for the wedding, but none of my other family or friends were there. Everyone pretty much insulted or ignored my parents and me on my wedding day in favour of making a speech about my husband and talking among themselves about their own family. Then the global issue happened and I never got my reception. My ex-husband thought I should be over it, which really doesn't justify why he absolutely had to have his family at our wedding when he knew it would be impossible for most of my side to fly such a long distance at last minute. I'm still super salty about it. Don't let your fiancé pressure you into regretting your wedding day. Are you sure you're both ready for marriage, which is a lifetime of hard work and sacrifice, if you can't even manage to deal with the issue of wedding attendance? I, 27 male, live with my girlfriend, 25. I work as a mechanic while she works in HR at an engineering firm. Her best friend also works at her firm as a civil engineer. My girlfriend had her friends over for an evening get-together last night. They can drink a bit much and be rowdy, and while they aren't bad people, I'd prefer not to be around them when they get to that stage, so I plan to retreat to my friend's house for a quiet night of pizza and video games. Unfortunately, my car chose that moment to have a flat battery. It was getting a bit old. My girlfriend's car was parked next to mine in the garage, though. Seeing as I would have to get my car to my workshop the next day, I decided instead to take my girlfriend's car. I would jumpstart my car with hers and drive it around a bit now to give it enough charge to last until tomorrow when I could replace the battery at work. I'd fish the jumper cables out when my girlfriend and her friends staggered out. My girlfriend asked me why I'm still there and I show her the jumper cables and tell her that I'm working on getting out. Her civil engineering friend sees that I'm preparing to jumpstart the car and tells me she could do it for me. I say that I'm fine and will be quick and she can return to having fun inside. She doesn't take no for an answer and grabs the cables. I protest but her friends gang up and ask if I think she doesn't know. The friend connects everything and gets in my girlfriend's car and is about to start it when I see that she's connected the black cable to the negative terminal of my dead car instead of a metal ground part of my car. I shout at her to stop and quickly snatch the key away to prevent her from starting the car and an explosion. I start yelling at my girlfriend and her friends and tell them to get lost into the house and not blow up my car. I also tell them they're banned from ever getting in it, touching or riding my or my girlfriend's car. They're angry but go back inside, muttering how I'm a massive idiot. Not the idiot, but I think you overreacted to some intoxicated chicks who aren't thinking straight. It's okay to have a minor meltdown, but I don't think you can perma-ban them from your girlfriend's car for real. 
Also, it's not your car, it's hers. You don't own it or her, so it's her decision to make. Wait, are you saying a person who's been drinking heavily has the right to decide if they get into their own car? Even if someone can stop them, you're saying they shouldn't? OP is literally a mechanic, but yes, you know better. No intoxicated person should have any car keys in their hands, period. I think when we're talking about people clearly intoxicated and enough electricity in those cables to kill someone, OP reacted appropriately to being swarmed and having an intoxicated person hooking up electrical connections, causing an explosion. I'm sure we'd all be asking OP why he didn't kick them out had it ended with the friend being hurt in front of all of them. This was purely a prove women could do what men could do moment and nothing else. Relax, it wouldn't cause an explosion. In 30 years, I've never had a battery explode because I connected the black cable to the negative lead on a battery, and I've jump-started a lot of cars. My most recent jump-start was two days ago. Red to positive, black to negative on both batteries, nothing exploded. Again, you overreacted and then set rules for someone else's property. You are the idiot and a crappy mechanic if you think that's what causes batteries to explode.